Dan, I know you've been here for uh, three days going through the, the boot camp with Mr. Gary Ellix and Drew Cameron. And uh, we heard from you in a previous episode. But what I want to talk about tonight uh, in this episode is, you know, really what your dream is. Like, why are you in the game? We heard from Ben earlier. It's about the sailboat, apparently a solar-powered sailboat, which I don't get because the wind is like, you know, enough, I would think. And if I mean, I'm a gas combustion, if that doesn't work. Uh, but uh, what's the dream? What's the obstacle? These two cats right here are going to tell you how to get over the obstacle. So, um, you know, I, I was kind of pondering that. I knew that you were going to ask me that question. And, um, you know, I started this thing in 1992 with uh, 350 bucks in my pocket and an S10 pickup. And I had no clue what I was doing. I, I really didn't. And uh, I had a lot of ambition and a whole bunch of brochures. And I just started going out there and talking to people and so um I, I didn't have a vision or a dream at that moment and what i found was that i just put my head down and i just went and i worked and worked and um worked really hard and when i when i kind of popped my head up it was like man I, i'm something's happening you know it's starting this is starting to come together it's starting to work it started coming to to uh gary's trainings and and things really started to work. And uh, so to, to have the dream uh, was to create the, um, uh, the management team so that I could, I could look at the company from 50,000 feet, 30,000, whatever it is, and look down and, and be able to have the driving vision of, of the company. Um, but as I, as I worked through the as I worked so hard, I had no clue how to do that. Um, and it's it's becoming more and more that that's what I do. Sometimes I walk around the office thinking that, man, I, I, they don't need me. I, I might as well go home. But nice feeling, right? You know, it, it really is. And and so um, the the dream is starting to come true. Um, but you know, I, I I I'm so accustomed to the hundred hours a week. You know, or the, um, you know, that I don't really know where I'm at or what I want to do, and things like this. This is this is part of the dream right here. You know, being able to be with guys like you, hanging out with me, and, and <laughs> well, that's a big dream, you know, man. And, and Gary, you're, re you're and, really uh, reaching for the stars, pal. I, I did. I, you know, I. I <laughs> <laughs> I know you met Gary and Drew, not me. Well, you know. Pocket list. Check. <laughs> yeah, I, I, got, I got to be with Weldon. I'm, I'm good. Now. Um, but you know, the the, the I, I'm really I'm really formulating my dream right now. I'm I'm trying to figure out, you know, where to go and and um, you know, uh, seeing the camaraderie that you guys have and and and. That that's a lot of fun to me. Yeah. You know, I'm 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 that guy that likes to, you know, be be in the moment. Um, and so, uh, and I know that's not really a a, a question for you guys, but um, I love you, man. Love you. <laughs> but but, it, but it'll be a question when I'm done. Just continue. But, Let me do my the, job. Yeah, I'm on the clock. You do your thing, well, then. I'm you on the clock here. Trust us. Okay, so, all right. Um, so here's the thing. So so let's get beyond. Uh, uh, you know, kind of the the obvious stuff. You want to get the team, you want to get the processes so that the business, you, you work on the business instead of in the business. Yeah, and that's... The we're, question we're is, close. then what? Well, at that at that point... Um, you want to be honestly, in the boat with Ben? I want to be in the boat with Ben. <laughs> no, we're, 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 nah, we're... that's not what you said. You said you want you would never quit, never quit working. You told that's, me that today. That's right. And, and, and I don't... I mean that that's kind of my dream. I, I I really want to go to the office and have my little area and wander around and talk to you know that's everybody. That, and that, that's amazing. Leland Smith, uh, Service Champions, Orange County. Uh, he recently took on some investors uh, to the tune of I don't know how many zeros, uh, lots and lots. But he still goes in. And he told me recently he works harder than ever. He loves going in. And his job now it's a fifty million dollar company and very profitable. And they've grown to about 250 million by another companies. And he's like, my job is to come in every day and find problems and find creative solutions to solve them. He loves it. He loves it. He works seven days a week. Yeah. I, I love encouraging the guys. I, I come, I'm there. I'm there before anybody else. 
and they come in and I thank them for what they do and I thank them for um, all the hard work that they put in. I mean, I, I really enjoy that. Um, and, and you're right, I, I really don't plan on retiring, but I plan on taking long vacations, yeah. you know, I mean, and, and going. Like a whole weekend? Yeah, like a whole, like, like, well, it, it's going to be like a four day, like a whole, a whole four day. Like, like, it, reminds, it reminds me of that episode from The Simpsons where, 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 uh, Homer Simpson wasn't feeling well and he went to call him on a Friday morning, right, to the nuclear power plant guy and said, I'm so sick. And the guy, uh, Burns, Burns says, Simpson, if you don't come in today, you might as well consider yourself not coming in Monday. He's like, woo, four day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. So that's what you want, the four day yeah. weekend. Yep, that's, that's a that's big dream there, Dan. That's, that's, Hanging out with me a four day weekend. Yeah, I, you yeah. know, I, I peaked. I, I'm, yeah, I've peaked. got it. I'm, I'm, you I'm sure there. like a 1973 <laughs> Gremlin isn't in there somewhere? <laughs> some I mean, because you're really going for the top here, pal. It was pal. the Volkswagen. <laughs> the Volkswagen. Volkswagen. Okay. Go with the 72 Ford Pinto. There we go, the Pinto. <laughs> Just don't get hit in the back. <laughs> that's the beauty of having the four right. pinto. It's the risk. It's the risk. It's the, yeah. it's the constant excitement. That's, that's the, the constant excitement. Living on the edge. Living on the edge. Living on the edge. Can you imagine? <laughs> hey, can you imagine a 1972 Ford Pinto with texting in the mix? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The likelihood oh, you get yeah. in your end is pretty high. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. so, yeah. So okay, so 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 I, I'm distilling down what you're saying down to two things: process and people, right? Yep. Getting the right process, getting the right people. So I'm gonna let these two experts, and G-Man, I'm gonna let you pick. You want to talk about the processes or the people that he needs to achieve that dream? Where the hell am I supposed to go with all that? <laughs> Wing it. People or process? So you start out people. with People. It's always people. <laughs> yeah. You start out with contract university. People. It's always people. Yeah. It, pe people's always going to be the biggest opportunity and uh, in our industry, probably the biggest obstacle. So it's both. And you've done an amazing job of hiring uh, people. And then you've developed them. So you, you didn't always have the greatest people. But I, what I'll say is the courage to actually look at your people and make change based on the idea of, all right, develop or I'm going to have to put the right person not only on the right bus, but also in the right seat. And so I, I just applaud you for having the courage and the wisdom to see that and then make the changes. So it's easy for somebody like me or Drew to actually see it. We're not emotionally attached to that. We're, we're not there every day. We don't work seven days a week. I, I mean, maybe you do, but I know I don't. <laughs> but the, the point is you saw the problem and you made the changes and you brought people in that were better uh, cultural fits and culture is what you drive. So you haven't talked about culture, but you have one of the best cultures of any company in the industry. A lot of people talk about what's the greatest brand in the industry. I'm not sure that you're not in that conversation. You're not the largest sales dollars company in the industry, but that's not the question. What's the greatest brand isn't about sales. It's about what is the greatest culture and who would you want to go to work for? Where do you want to be? And I would answer Advantage is probably one of those companies. So that's a, a testament to you and your leadership team. And so your choice of people, it's always people. Yeah. You know, and you said something earlier today when we were uh, chatting uh, in, behind the room, at the back of the room when uh, Gary was finishing up, that you had kind of spread yourself thin at one point, yeah. different markets, yeah. and you realized, wow, everything I want to build, I can build right here in Salem, right? That level of focus. And so it's interesting because you have a lot of the, own, the answers yourself, right? You know what the answers are. Thank you. Yeah. But I do have a question, though. Some, some oh, yes. question. That's, that's I got another question. decision. That's honestly, it's my decision. It's, I know. I, I'm, I'm asking, you know. So, so Dan, do you have any questions? It's the hard eight. It's the hard eight. Go with the hard eight. <laughs> that makes sense. So, I know I'm supposed to have 1,000 to 1,500 uh, uh, maintenance agreements per million of dollars that I do in residential sales. It's, it's, it's really difficult because that, that number continues to grow. So, as I get more as I get more uh, maintenance agreements, I'm, my, my millions are going up. So my, my revenue goes up as, as I get more maintenance agreements. So it's really hard to catch that. You know, three years ago, what the maintenance agreements I have now, yeah, that fit, but I'm not the same spot I was three years ago. So it's really hard to get that 1500 or, or get that elusive thousand per million. How, how, how do I, I mean, we're doing all kinds of things we're putting out promotions, we're doing all of that, and we are growing them, but what's, what's the best way to, That's a to overcome question, that? And I'm excited for this answer. 
Um, there's a ton of questions that attach to your question, so I, I don't know what the answers would be, and that formulates my answer, but, you know, your conversion rate is a question. Um, the price creating consumption is, is a question. A million dollars for a maintenance agreement, nobody's going to consume that. No, right. A maintenance agreement that, that is free, everybody would probably take that. So your pricing strategy plays into that. Um, how you're actually growing your other retrofit business plays into that. In other words, have you done tuck-ins acquisitions? So, uh, but I, I love where you're at. In other words, what you've said is, um, my revenue is growing. I'm going to work with the assumption your profit is also growing mm -hmm. because of that. So none of that is a bad thing. All of that is like a huge win. So you, you've won, uh, you know, the opportunity. The question becomes, are your milestones getting hit? So, you know, so if you're at 350 per million and then you grow to 400 per million and then 500 per million and then 600 per million, 800 per million, 1,000 per million, the goal is to continue to move the needle forward. Drew talks about 1% a day. There's, there's a book that describes that philosophy as well. Just get a little bit better every day. So if your milestones are moving forward, it's not about getting to 350 to 1,000, you know, in a year. It's about are you migrating towards the overall target? The point is when you get to 1,000 and then ultimately 1,500, you don't have to spend as much marketing lead generation money. You get to keep that money. You get to leverage your existing customer base. We know they buy 67% more money from you because they love your brand. So all those dollars create profitability opportunities for the company. And it also offers you opportunities to just basically communicate with your existing clients through different mediums and channels versus the idea of going out on media or radio, and, you know, cable, TV, direct mail, and saying, gosh, buy for me, Wally. You know, here, I've got this 16 here, you know, two-stage piece of equipment with a 16-year warranty, and I really want you to buy it. So that's a lower closure rate. We close at 30%. We know on maintenance we close at 85%. So the opportunities and the improvement in productivity are just better in your existing customers. So the maintenance program is a marketing philosophy. The question is, are you getting better each day? What's the answer? Yes. So don't worry about getting to the milestone. Worry about the journey. It's not the goal. Olympic athletes have said multiple times when they achieve their objective, they've won the gold medal, they get a huge letdown. Many of them go into depression. Oh. They don't understand because they actually were working on the journey. They get to the goal and they've got nothing behind that. So it's not the result that you're looking for. It's the journey, remember. And then there'll be another journey after that. So goal setting is 1,000 and then 1,500. And then probably at some point, you know, you're, you're growing the business, you know, behind that. And that's really what you need to be thinking about. What a great problem to have that your revenue is growing so quickly you're having a hard time catching up on your maintenance agreements. Because you will catch up, as Gary said. But what a great uh, uh, pursuit to have to be in.